Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Dane Reads. So this was given to me by my friend Amanda, it's a bit of a booktube darling, and uh, oh yeah, because she wrote the seven, seven deaths, seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo, not the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Something's going on there, I don't know why the seven deaths... Uh, no, the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn and the seven husbands of Evelyn. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to read the blurb, go through, check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Everyone knows Daisy Jones and the Six. Their albums were on every turntable. They sold out arenas from coast to coast. Their sound defined an era. And then on 12th of July 1979, they split. Nobody ever knew why until now. The only thing that's certain is that from the moment Daisy Jones walked barefoot under the stage of the whiskey, the band were irrevocably changed. This is the story of their incredible rise and fall, the ambition, the desire, the heartbreak and the music. Everyone was there, everyone remembers it differently. So it kind of takes the form of an oral history. Um, and so that makes it quite quick and easy to read. It also re was reminiscent of Ram by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, by the way, the reason they broke up is because they're all terrible people. Um, but that did make them feel more realistic. But you're not necessarily going to like them. But then it's like, well, when you read about rock stars, they're all bellends really, aren't they? So Daisy sounds like me. Her friend Simone says, uh, we ended up sharing a bed for six months, so I can tell you firsthand that that girl never slept. I'd be trying to fall asleep at four in the morning and Daisy would want the light on so she could read. That's exactly the kind of thing that I do. And Daisy's like moved out of home and it says here, she says, I was living with Simone for two weeks before I went home to get more clothes. My dad said, did you break the coffee maker this morning? I said, Dad, I don't even live here. So we get this, Billy says, Karen was just a great musician. That was all there was to it. I always say I don't care if you're a man, woman, white, black, gay, straight, or anything in between. If you play well, you play well. Music is a great equalizer in that way. And then Karen says, men often think they deserve a sticker for treating women like people. You get a lot of like dramatic irony as it cuts from comment to comment throughout the book, you know? Warren says, let me tell you the sweet spot for being in rock and roll. People think it's when you're at the top, but no. That's when you got the pressure and the expectations. What's good is when everybody thinks you're headed somewhere fast, when you're all potential. Potential is pure fucking joy. Here, uh, Daisy says, that's one thing they don't mention when they tell you to stay away from drugs. They don't say, drugs will have you sleeping with some real jerks. But they should. And an uh, interesting bit by Karen here, she says, I think people that are too similar, they don't mix well. I used to think soulmates were two of the same. I used to think I was supposed to look for somebody that was just like me. I don't believe in soulmates anymore and I'm not looking for anything. But if I did believe in them, I'd believe your soulmate was somebody who had all the things you didn't, that needed all the things you had. Not somebody who's suffering from the same stuff you are. And that's a bit of foreshadowing about how Daisy and Billy are kind of soulmates because they're two opposites. And Billy is like a former addict and um, this stuff he says here is quite relatable because I'm like, I'm not smoking, I'm not drinking. Uh, I probably will go back to drinking once I've reached a year, but he says, there was that voice again inside my head that was telling me I was never gonna be able to stay sober for the rest of my life. What is the point of getting sober at all if I know I'll never kick it forever or fail one day anyway? Shouldn't I pack it all in? Quit on myself, quit on everybody. Spare Camilla and my girls the heartbreak later and admit who I really am. But that's just the addiction talking, mate. And Camilla here, Camilla being my spirit animal, she says, if you come to me and ask me for my advice, and then you don't take my advice, and it blows up in your face exactly like I told you it would, what do you expect me to say? And Rod here talking about like the uh, practicalities of recording on vinyl. And it's interesting because, uh, so I've got like four albums out now. Uh, mine are all 72 minutes long because that's the maximum amount of length you can fit on a CD. So Rob, Rod says, we were working to record the backlog of songs that Daisy and Billy had written. I think they had almost the entire album by that point. We were already talking about what could fit on the record and what couldn't. People don't think about it anymore because the technology is so different, but we had such a tight running time back then. You could fit 22 minutes on one side of a record most of the time. And Karen here, she says, I never understood people putting their real emotions into something they know they have to play on tour over and over and over again. Yeah, it happens, and like, you write songs about women and then the women fuck off and then you're like, oh, I've got this really good song but it's about a woman who now hates my guts. Daisy says, acceptance is a powerful drug and I should know because I've done them all. And then later on, uh, talking about the drugs, she says, the drugs aren't so cute anymore when you wake up with dry blood under your nose so often. The cleaning it off is part of your morning routine, like brushing your teeth. And you always have new bruises and you don't know why. When there's a knot in the back of your hair because you've forgotten to brush it for weeks. 
and then Warren says this because he lives on a boat, but I think this is harsh because I've always wanted to live on a boat, and I know like adults, like I know an amazing trans woman um, guitarist, singer songwriter who lives on a boat with her, with her partner, although her partner did fall and break her ankle. <laughs> Uh, Warren says, I'd spent about three weeks on my boat, smoking cigars, getting drunk, barely changing my clothes. Lisa and I had been talking a bit since the show on SNL. She came out to see me. She said, you live on a boat? I said, yeah. She said, you're an adult, get a real house. She had a point. No, she didn't. Live on a boat if you want to. All right, and then we get uh, this author's note here. The author sort of suddenly inserts herself into the story, and it's that old, like, uh, unreliable narrator trope. I just didn't really like the breaking of the fourth wall, but I see why she did it, to add, like, a twist or whatever. Author's note, while I have made a concerted effort to remove myself from the narrative, I included here a verbatim transcript of one conversation I had with Daisy Jones, because I am, in fact, the only one that can corroborate this essential piece of Daisy's story. And uh, then we get to what people are doing after the band split up, and Graham, of course, has his own hot sauce, as you do. Uh, also, we get some of the lyrics presented towards the end, but I didn't really enjoy reading those. I think you can tell they were written by a novelist rather than a lyricist. Uh, and then there's an acknowledgement where we get a reference to Friends, which I just, just thought was funny because I've just started re-watching Friends. Somebody is reversing past my house very dangerously. Uh, anyway, so Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins read. Overall, I'd give it probably a four out of five. It was pretty good. Maybe not quite as good as all of the hype made it out to be. But uh, if you're into this sort of thing, and I do like books about music, uh, and I also like books that tell like the fictitious history of something, whether it's a company or a person or whatever, you know, that take it from conception to, to end. Uh, so yeah, I did enjoy it. Probably would recommend, especially to music fans. To the general reader, I don't know, if, 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 if it takes your fancy and you like the highlights that I've read from it. So there we have it, that's what I made of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.